Hello guys, welcome back to my reviews. In this installment, we'll look at Nine from 2007. So Nine is an animated TV, well, hold on. Not TV film, an actual film very much. Why did I say TV film? It kind of looks like a TV film, to be honest, actually. Um, this came on 2007, and it's interesting, a really interesting film, actually. Computer animated film done by a guy called Shane Acker, which apparently originates from a short film that he'd done back in the early 2000s, really. I think circa 2003. It's either, it's dates me up to like something like 2000, pre-2005, really. You know, when it originally was presented to us, really. And obviously got greenless and also ended up being um, this interesting, sort of interesting film with Tim Burton as a um, producer, strangely enough. So this film follows the adventures of the Stitch, like, puppets. Think of, like, oh, what do you call it? Like, oh, what do you call that game? That P the old PS3 game you used to get, a little plant or something like that, little, like, sack boys. Something like that, but a bit more steampunk, very steampunk-esque. Uh, so you get characters who are, dumb, who are actually different names. So you've got Nine, who's obviously the more, the sort of main protagonist who's more, I would say, out there, a bit more forward thinking as well you got one as well who's sort of the leader really he's very sort of obeying and also just yeah you know takes takes some shit for anyone just his own his own directions really to be to be honest um you've got number you've got six who's very sort of a psychic in a way who's basically just got a bit crazy you know, sort of like a foreteller, really. You know, he's basically, again, sort of like how he's look, looked in a film. He's so got stripes like he's meant to be like a, a insane prisoner or, or something, really. In that way, you've got three, who's the old, who's the old man, who's sort of the elder, really. Sort of the old elder, unfortunately, and ends up uh, getting killed. He gets, his, he gets his soul taken out, unfortunately. I think when they first try to free him, I think. Actually, no, when they first free him from, a bird, from this old birdcage and... Nine actually releases this creature, this mass, this dangerous computer thing. Um, yeah, interesting. Um, so you, so you, got, you, got, you got them characters voiced, of course, re respectively, you know, by Elijah Wood, John C. Riley, Christopher Plummer, I think, is in this as well. Crispin Glover, I think, is in as well. So it's a decent, it's a decent voice cast, you know, on this one. So it's really good. Uh, the story, it's how it, how it looks itself, is very very apocalyptic, very Mad Max wasteland, even though they're quite small characters, of course, you know, the scope of it is actually re really something. Um, so, why has this happened? Well, mankind got erased by this new, new so-called uh, computer thing, like a machine maker, a weapons maker done by the Soviet Union. And they obviously AI and everything else, it goes out of control and kills everyone. You know, it builds weapons, of course, and just dis and dis destroys mankind, destroys all, hu all humanity, really, and left in a barren wasteland. And these puppets that an inventor made, so nine, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, you know, they exist. They're sort of like the last remains of life, really, to be honest, I think. And they hold sort of the key, really. You know, like an essence, like the essence. Well, it's like part. Of, apparently, um, it's part of the scientist. I think he's part in the in the pup in the in the in the um in the sack people. But I don't know. What, I don't know what you call them. Really, you know these characters. I don't know what what the sort of like that is very oddly, you know, glass-eyed sack boys or whatever sack people. Um, yeah, hmm. it's interesting though. You know, and obviously, this, I think this, I think this is like the last remains of what humanity was, really. And this have to roam around, you know, the the, the way it stands for eternity, really, until machines are stopped, or whenever. Yeah, it's interesting though. It's a really interesting film because I remember I remember seeing I remember getting it on a pirated copy back in the day, back in twenty seven, uh, no, um, two thousand seven when it was released, really. But I never actually saw it. I never saw it anyway. I think I might have seen it advertised on TV, but I never never saw it in full until just very recently when it popped on Netflix, really. So I thought, give it a watch, really. The other thing also that I found out with Shane Acker, who 
I don't know what films he really done, but one film was he was meant to, originally planned to do. I think it was just like maybe two years after Nine came out, was he was meant to do a Thomas Anderson film set during the Second World War under Hitz. Uh, leadership by then, because Ben and Tim and so had the rights by then, and they plan to do a movie like an uh, again sort of like a animated movie, but set during the Second World War. Apparently that was original idea, and that had been floating around for years, of course, until well nothing really ever came from it really. But Shane Acker was really was was meant to be involved. He was meant to direct it, of course. So. I don't know how it, how it is, but obviously now we're actually getting, just recently, we, it's, some news, some people have been announcing like there's been a, uh, Mark Forster is actually going to t t handle a movie, like a live action part animated movie, which is going to be sort of, I don't know how that's going to go really, but who knows really. That's just, that's just been announced just recently, very recently that has, so Let's see how that goes. But going back to Nine, it's an interesting experience really, it's an interesting film. Um, I don't think they ever, ever continue doing like a, like a, it seems like it may seem like a franchise where you can do a trilogy out of this, but nothing ever really came through it really, unfortunately. Um, it's interesting, very visually done, very dark as well. This it's quite dark something for an animated film, especially especially that sort of time. Well, it's very PG, so it's you know it's an, it's 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 it's, it's, a, it's a kids film, but it's you know if you're at you and it's really the same way it is, you're probably might shock a few people, but. It's an interesting experience to go on to, so there you go. So that's nine. And the second film we're going to cover on this doorbell is The Adventure of Tintin, Secret of the Unicorn, or The Secret of the Unicorn from 2011. Aye. So this is a really good film, this is. This is really something, this is. Um, based on the work by Hergé, um, I tell you, this story combines a couple of, sto uh, a couple of stuff, I think, from two, I'm not entirely sure what the stories are. I'm really sorry. Please comment down below if you if you're familiar with Tintin. Please comment down below. I'm really sorry. I've, I've really lost uh, the um, what, what are the names of the two books they they adapted they they put in. I don't. Sorry, I really don't really know. Unfortunately, it's just like gone now. Um, where do we begin with this one? It's, it's a really, it, there's a lot of people involved with this, like a lot of famous people. Obviously you have Steven Spielberg and Peter Jackson working together on this movie. So it's basically, you know, Spielberg, Jackson, co-thing uh, co really. It's their thing. Um, written by Edgar Wright, Joe Cornish, and Stephen Moffat. Oh, that is very interesting. You know, again, well, Steve, you know, a Peter Jackson film with, Steven Spielberg attached as co-director, co-producer, anything else. But you also got Moffat, Cornish, and and Wright contributing to the screen, doing the screenwriting for the movie. Hmm, interesting. You've also got a very good talented cast as well. You've got Jamie Bell as Tintin. You've got Andy Serkis as Captain Haddock. Um, I've got the guy, the villain's name, portrayed by Daniel Craig. You've also got Sam Peck and Nick Frost as the, as the Thompson twins. You know, there is some power to this. This does. You know, it's again, it's. It's craftily done by uh, Peter Jackson's company, I think by the same visual, well it's done by Mo Capture, so it's done by the same stuff that Jackson used on like his, you know, the Tolkien the Tolkien franchise that he worked on, you know, Lords of the Rings and the Hobbit of course, so it's it's sort of, it's in his wheelhouse but also he has that sort of, it has that sort of comically like Indiana Jones type style adventurous look to it like what Steven Spielberg has brought into it really, so it's a nice little marriage made in heaven really in that sort of way. Um, I don't mind the visuals. I think the visuals are really good. Of course, they cap they do capture the the look of Hergé's uh, style really of how how it is. You know, make it re make it sort of semi realistic, but also make it a bit cartoonish as well. I like that actually. You know, very very visually as well. Action pack, very bonk. You know, very good, very bonkers in terms of its set pieces. And you know, but it's a really good one. You know, it's a really good. It's a good film actually. You can say this came out nearly ten years ago. It's like it's still very good. It still hold still holds up. You know, this still being you know. You can you can stream on Netflix. You can it can be it's broadcast on TV now and again. So again, it's a really good it's a really good one. Really, I just really enjoyed it. It's a very fun movie in in a way. A lot of, again, a lot of good set pieces. The voice the, the acting as well are really good. Of course, um, I don't know if I, don't, I forgot who did the score really, but again, comment down below if you know the film who scored who and who and whatever. Again, pretty good stuff actually. You know, sort of again, so it captures that sort of adventurous style to it. Of course. Um, now there was a, there was meant to be a sequel co uh, meant to be come out 
how many years uh, after the movie's released, but that's still in development hell, that is, you know. Spielberg and Jackson obviously say, yeah, yeah, we're still getting around to it, you know, we was waiting for a script, of course. Um, I think I went to Hor Anthony Horowitz was meant to, mention, was actually sort of, I, you meant to be writing for it, I don't know. Um, bit of an interesting thing, I think. Um, did, did the Silver Balls, I think it was, I think. Did it the Silver Balls? I think it is, actually, I'm not entirely sure. Um... But that's still in development hell. I mean, I'd be interested, of course. You know, we're still waiting for that sequel, but it's never come. Give it a couple of years, maybe a few more years. Maybe give it 14 years, it'll probably come out. I don't know. It's like The Incredibles, really. Because you think, there should have been a sequel to The Incredibles, like, after the movie, but they never did. Until Brad Bird, obviously, came out 14 years later. I think it could be, I think about 2017, 2018, the sequel came out. The sequel came out. It's like, okay. It's taken that long. It's like... Again, it's like again, like with some like some films like Toy Story, they have have tend to have long gaps. They do in terms of in films, really. It depends on the actors and also everything else, really. So that could be the thing, really. That could be one thing, you know, um, involving involving you know, Peter Jackson did more Solange, of course. Simon Pegg and Nick Frost did their own things, of course. Simon Pegg is more so with Star Trek and the Mission Impossible franchise as well, heavily involved in there. Uh, Jeremy Bell, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe just like independent British movies, I don't know. Um, Andy Serkis, obviously he's in. He's played Alfred, Alfred, um, Alfred Pennyworth now in the Batman. Matt Reeves is Batman. Um, so, who knows? Probably probably when it comes down to the schedule, of course. If everyone's busy or just bit uninterested, who knows? But give it, give it a few more years, we'll probably end up with a sequel. Who know, You know, that probably might turn out what it is. You know, we'll probably have a long gap. You know, between you know, Secret of the Yukon from 2011 to maybe whatever you know, the Adventure of Tintin, the whatever, you know, in 2020, 2023. Who knows? Um, it's still a good film, actually. I really do enjoy it, of course. I, my dad was watching it recently, actually, so I thought, you know, this might be an idea to cover it, actually. Um, and put it alongside with Nine as well. It sort of seems ideal because they have different animated styles all together. So it's pretty, pretty interesting. Quite groundbreaking stuff in, in many regards, really, in terms of children's films, really. So action adventure, some, one of them's dark, one's just like very just like light, fluffy adventure type stuff, really. Indeed. So there we go. So I've been talking about Nine from 2007 and The Adventure of Tintin, The Secret of the Unicorn from 2011. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'll see you for the next video and see you later.